Hello my friend, it is Cami from the blog and channel Tidbits and Company. Today marks a really exciting day. It is the completion of our porch, which marks the completion of our pole barn home or barn dominium, whatever you want to call it, that we have built ourselves from the ground up. Everything in the interior is done. I am changing a few things now, but <laughs> Finishing this porch kind of meant that the interior and the exterior of this home is finished and that is so exciting. You have no idea. We've been working on this for four years as time and money allow. This was not a snap your fingers and it's done kind of space that you see so much on Instagram and social media. This was a labor of love. And here we are with a finished porch that I really am excited to share with you. So I just want to thank you for being with me today and letting me share this space with you. I'm out here with the chickens, so if you hear them, um, I hope you enjoy the sounds of the country. <laughs> anyway, there are just some design details that I mostly want to share with you about this porch. It was all DIY. I mean, Mr. Tidbits did it all, but um, I didn't feel like any of it really warranted a tutorial. It was just a master carpenter that pulled it all together and it looks so good. So hopefully you can get inspired by the design by just having me share with you some of the things we decided to do. So before we talk about like the decorations or furnishings that I added, let's actually just go over the structure of this really long porch on this kind of farmhouse style house. So of course we had the siding on the house finished, which is a tin board and batten siding. And I will link the actual company that we got this tin siding from. It looks really nice and it should last for years and years and years. You don't have to repaint it, very durable. Um, so that kind of finished off the house, but on this porch we needed to figure out a solution for the ceiling the beams that ran along the ceiling and the posts for the porch. So we thought about those a lot. I looked at a lot of inspiration, gathered it on Pinterest. I did a whole video about kind of the porch design inspiration that I was putting together, but you can definitely check out this Pinterest board and kind of see where some of my um, inspiration came from. But the first thing I felt we really needed to nail down and address was what to do on the ceiling of this porch. So. I just adore like those southern porches with the blue painted ceilings and or beadboard or planks. I just have always always loved that and I knew when we had this really long porch that would just be like my dream come true if we could do that. So we ended up getting like shiplap pine boards and putting them together to cover the ceiling and what I decided to do for the color was actually color match the tin that is on the roof of this house which is it's like a blue gray green i love the color so much we ended up repainting our garage front doors that color and all the exterior doors and then it just felt right to kind of wrap it around into the ceiling so it's not like the light blue that maybe is a lot of the inspiration on my pinterest board but it is still this like blue green that just works with the natural environment so well. I love this color. So I will, um, let's see, I can't give you the name of the paint color per se, but I will try to find the link to the um, tin that we used for the ceiling so that if you wanted to get a sample and price or color match it yourself, you could definitely do that. But it's a beautiful color. Now for the beams that we kind of framed out under this porch, um, originally I had thought that I really wanted them to be wood. That was what was in my head all along. Some big wood beams running along the porch. But as my husband wrapped the beams and we stood back and looked, um, it really felt like it would look more complete and cohesive if we just painted them white. Because I definitely didn't want the posts to be wood. We'd stared at wood posts, <laughs> unfinished wood posts for so many years. I knew I really wanted to paint them white and get more of a completed look. So knowing that I was going to do those white and we just color match the white of our siding, um, it just, once we played around, it just felt right to paint these beams on the ceiling white as well. And I think it did actually turn out super great. Love how it looks. 
Now let's talk about the posts. Um, my husband did some incredible wood detailing here that I just love and I never I, we never really have a method to our madness. He usually just pulls out some scrap woods, scrap pieces of wood that he has in his garage, and we just play around with it. Um, it ends up, I think we use like a piece of crown upside down and then some random wood trim to get a little ledge. And then I thought it'd be fun to put a little detail up above all the trim at the base. And so anyway, we just kind of pieced it together and landed on a design that we liked. So he just trimmed out these posts. And then a lot of the inspiration pictures I had had these, they're not corbels, they actually call them knee braces, which I think is really weird. But kind of this curve, you know, at the top of the post. I love all the porches that have those. So we found these knee braces online got them here and he put them on these posts and I think it just turned out so good. I love how they look. It's just, it just feels finished, complete, full of character, yet simple. It's just all the things that I was hoping to get um, with this porch. Now you'll have to forgive me. I'm showing you pictures um, of our finished porch, but as you can tell, like the landscaping is not done. That is actually where Kevin is turning all his focus on now building retaining walls. We're gonna have to kind of dig up all this front. So this isn't like a completed finished um, home image, if you will, but um, I, I just couldn't wait to share with you the porch. So landscaping's next. So I hope you can look past all the lovely weeds that we've had to look at for four years, but, um, and then just see the beauty of the porch. Now I have talked several times about our double Dutch French doors. I hope I said that right. <laughs> so they open up like Dutch doors, but they're also double French doors. This was like the biggest expenditure of our, of our house, I think it about killed my husband, but I just knew the front door was so important for this house. So I just love these Dutch doors. They add so much. Um, they were just custom. We went to a local um, door shop. They sketched out what I had in mind. And then I think they sent them to like a door man manufacturer. So I'm sorry, I don't know where to link you to to get these exact doors, but um, that is something maybe you could do is find um, a local service in your area that can do that for you. And I want to say, I think they use Simpson, Simpson doors to make them. I'll have to verify that, but um, I do know they went through a company that's fairly common. So I'll try to find that information for you. Now let's talk about the lighting. I was so excited to have this really long porch and just run it down with some light fixtures. Um, we toyed with the idea of doing fans, but in reality, um, we wouldn't use the fans that much and they were quite expensive. So I ended up just getting these pretty inexpensive light fixtures off of Amazon. I'll link them for you. They're just kind of the lantern style. Um, they look great in a row, yet they don't demand too much attention in and of themselves. So I think they turned out great. And I don't know if you guys have ever run into this problem, but I, I keep running into it. So my husband always drills the standard US size for a light fixture into the ceiling. He drills the right size hole and then we buy these fixtures. I'm guessing they're made in China. I don't know what the issue is here, but they always come and the, the cap for that hole in the light fixture is too small. I've run into that problem several times. So I think there's like, you know, you just have to be careful about buying this inexpensive stuff because sometimes you end up with these problems. So to fix this solution, um, Kevin just cut out a wood square piece of pine and then just kind of use that to cap off that hole. And so once we painted it the same color as the ceiling, I think it turned out pretty good. And I think that is it as far as like design things that we did to build out this porch. Um, I will say that there is one final thing I'd really like to do someday and that's add shutters to the windows in the same color that's on the ceiling. It's just not a purchase priority for us right now or if he's going to build them, not a time priority because we really want to get these retaining walls in before winter so that we can start like adding, you know, grass and shrubbery <laughs> in the spring. So just, it's just not going to happen this year, but someday I would like to add some shutters to the windows that would just finish off my porch dreams. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to some of, oh, he did actually build this um, porch swing behind me. Super excited about it. It is so comfortable and it's just a dream to sit out here and swing on that. We're actually tearing apart one of our kids' bedrooms. We built this loft area 
and it has bothered me for so long, but we built the railing out of walnut wood. And since we're taking that down, um, he just used the walnut wood from that project and built this porch swing. He just threw it together real fast and did not want me in his face with the camera. So sorry, no tutorial, <laughs> but we love this porch swing so much. It's just like my favorite thing ever to come out here in the evenings or in the mornings and just swing there with the kids and chat. It's just so much fun and I just, We'll probably keep the decor really simple with a throw of blanket and a couple of pillows until winter comes. Um, so let's talk about the furnishings and the things that I've added out here to kind of, you know, give us some seating and to give the porch some of the character that I hope to give it. So my main priority with the seating didn't exactly coincide with um, the design aesthetics that I wanted. <laughs> So what we have found through the four years that we've lived here is that we love to porch sit. Um, when you have a view like we have, it's almost irresistible to get out here in the evenings. It's just, it's all you want to do. So what I found happens is, you know, we just had a couple of rocking chairs here originally and all the kids would just try to grab chairs and scoot up close to us. And so it was always just this random mix of chairs. It always looked messy but I knew that porch sitting in close proximity together was going to be important. Now, design-wise, I would have rathered maybe got like more groupings and sections. So maybe done a couple of rocking chairs up close to the door and then give it some space and maybe do a couple more or a different kind of group setting. But I just knew that was not going to suit our needs as a family. So here's what I figured out to do. We have the porch swing here, which is pretty close to where I've bought two rocking chairs and this like glider bench. So right here on this end of the porch can easily fit all of us, all six of us and anyone else who might be visiting or a group of friends that my kids might have over. And we're just kind of cozied up here, but all looking at the view. So I figured for the best placement was to put these two wicker rocking chairs on the outside of this um, glider bench, which is super comfortable and fun to sit in. And I have to say these rocking chairs, I was nervous about them because we got some at Home Depot before. I ended up selling them on Facebook Marketplace because they were so uncomfortable. Like the armrests were too low. So you were always just kind of leaning and cranking your back. These ones, are a dream. I will be sure and link them for you, but the wicker is so comfortable to sit on. You can sit out here for hours with a good book <laughs> and it's just leaned perfectly. I'm not kidding you. They are the best rocking chairs I've ever had. I really wanted to get, find like actual vintage antique ones, but um, you know, the reality is a lot of times those are rickety. They don't hold up well and they're not that comfortable. So I was really going for form and function and I think they're beautiful and um, everyone approves. Husband loves them, and so it's comfortable for him, it's comfortable for all of us, and so we're all really happy with these rocking chairs. And this glider bench can fit a few little kids because they're little, <laughs> and then if anyone wants to sit on that um, porch swing, which they often do, it works great. So we're all right here, can just chat and enjoy um, the evenings or mornings or wherever we want to sit out on this porch. It's quite wonderful. So I also added a little um, drop leaf table that we've had. It was actually in my daughter's bedroom, but we did some swap of furniture. I'm sorry, that rooster is just wants to be on camera today. So anyway, I pulled out this table. We actually got it for like five or 10 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. And then I've thrifted some chairs and we just set them there. And it's just a cute area. And I love it when the kids will come out here to do maybe some art projects or their homeschool work. It's just so fun to have a little table out here. I think I would actually like to get a slightly bigger table at some point to fit maybe four kids. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna get a table on this porch big enough for the whole family. And it probably won't be needed because we're working on a back patio where we will likely do like a table that fits a lot of people. So I'm not worried about a table out here that'll fit all of us, but I do want to kind of invite this cozy area where the kids can just come out and work on things um, or be creative. So I also found this cute little shelf thing at an antique store and decided it would be great on the porch. 
and it's kind of got these like beadboard exterior. I think it's really cute. And so right now we're kind of transitioning. Well, maybe by the time this video goes out, it will be full fledged fall. <laughs> but right now as I'm filming, we're kind of transitioning into early fall and I just have some plants that I put out there for now and some kind of like garden potting stuff. But I tell you, I cannot wait until the pumpkins are ready in the garden and I can kind of just stage the pumpkins there. That rooster really wants to join us today. <laughs> but I just plan on putting, loading this little bookshelf with pumpkins. I think it'll be really cute. I got a new rug for the front of the door. The rugs out here really don't last too long. We have a whole slew of cats and they like to use it for their <laughs> scratching pads. So um, I got a new rug. It's a, I love the Jew rugs out here. They really grab onto the dirt on shoes so they don't drag so much into the house. But I love this one because it's kind of got this navy blue striped outline. Super cute. And then I have these terracotta big pots that I antiqued um, many years ago. Love them. And I just put some green trees or shrubs in these. And this is something that I have decided I love to do in the fall because I always usually have flowers there in the summer, but I, I want to put something in the pots by the door that is going to transition all the way through winter and even for spring. And what I found is you get like kind of an evergreen uh, bush or something, something like boxwoods would work. I can't remember the name of this exact plant, but something that's gonna stay green um, through winter and Christmas. It works so great because um, I'll probably get those little pumpkins and stuff it around them for fall. And then I take the pumpkins out and stuff pine cones around them. So the greenery in there it just transitions so nicely throughout all the seasons, um, the cold seasons, and saves me money because I'm only buying a plant once. Okay, I'm trying to think of what I maybe haven't mentioned. Um, if you're curious, the flooring is just concrete. Like our, our pole barn home is slab on grade if I said that appropriately but um, basically we just poured a big slab of concrete and built the pole barn structure on top of that and then framed out the walls for the interior so the porch is just an extension of what's already in the home and there's no ledge so I do love the porches with like wood um, porch flooring or I would have loved to do some kind of cute paver look but where it's just the same slab as it's in, under the house it's just a continuation of that so it'll just be concrete i don't think i'll ever paint it or anything we'll just go with this look but i did find this cute vinyl rug to put under the porch swing i love the vinyl rugs for the exterior because they just wipe down super easy or when you're like hosing off the porch you can just hose it off at the same time um, and it just actually feels really nice to <laughs> just take off your shoes and sit there and swing and land your feet on something smooth and soft. So anyway, I think that is all the details. I think the roosters are done too. So <laughs> we'll wrap up this video. I hope you've enjoyed seeing it. I hope you've enjoyed seeing it up close and some of these wider glimpses. Um, I'm really looking forward to doing maybe a whole house tour, like from the inside out, but um, I kind of got my docket full for a little bit, so hopefully we'll work on that <laughs> before winter comes so you guys can just see how the whole house um, has turned out and transitions. So let me know if that is something you would like to see. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed this porch tour. Please check out my blog post for more details, sources, beautiful pictures. I love doing photography of finished spaces. It's one of my favorite things to share with you. So go to tidbitsandcompany.com and check out the blog post. And that rooster is just not going to be quiet. So let's wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll be back very soon to share more inspiration for the keeper of the home.